You don't even have a trucking company. I'm just going to freight guard you for the hell of it. Yeah, why not? Why not? I have an MC number. Why not? Then Jill won't come on because she'll look it up. Let's ask her. Jill Clifford, president at Freight Plus. She's here with us. Oh. Pretty relevant. Jill, you ever use this freight card thing? Or are you checking out your carriers on here and going, nope, that guy sucks because they got a bad freight card? You do. We use Carrier 411. It's like the Yelp for truck drivers, right? Wow. So yeah. Tim, Tim has shown up at a you know receiver and he's a jerk more than three times. We don't use them even if... The, you know, the MC clears, the driver safety rating clears um, through yeah. all of the other transportation technology we use. But we absolutely use it. It's important. Yeah. Super important. It's dangerous because those Listen, reviews can Tim, be. Those, those reviews can be really entertaining and you can go deep into those because it's pretty funny to watch some of the arguments that are on 411 actually. Sure. I don't want to be on Tim's Salesforce review, or maybe I do. We'll have to see how that goes. <laughs> I don't. I don't really. I don't really. When I was doing sales, I actually you'd put like notes in like yeah. that when you did. <laughs> sure. When you did, Jill, is it easier? Like, let's start. Let's start there. Right now, it's fall 2022 in the market. We'll get into some LTL, but right now, is it easier than ever to find a carrier? Is it is it harder? Is tech helping? Um, you guys have an interesting seat on that, being uh, managed transportation. You're looking at carriers all the time. What is it? What are you seeing? I mean, I would have to say, you know, managed transportation is a difficult market to work in. It's much different than transactional truckload brokerage. But this is the benefit of managed transportation is we're really trying to build those strategic relationships with underlying carrier assets. Um, and in a managed trans model, you have the ability to do that better than a transactional brokerage model as you're looking at all volumes from a client. Uh, you're not transactionally out shopping for carrier rates at the load level. You're building those relationships. So, you know, for us, you know, capacity has loosened a bit. Um, the spot market is, you know, in some ways driving those contract rates down. But in the overall strategy of building strategic partnerships with carriers, I, I think we're in a good spot. You know, and the not- technology definitely helps for sure. No question. Yeah, good technology with that visibility for that capacity and the loads is really, really important. The other part of this, I would imagine, and uh, hopefully you've got an opinion on this, is the ability to manage different modes of transportation, LTL, truckload, intermodal as well, correct? Yeah, and we're in the global market too. Um, so the visit, you know, the visibility is key. You know, we're looking for, we don't call them requests for pricing. We call them requests for partnerships. Um, And what you can offer us with visibility is just as important as to, if not more important at times, as to what you can offer us for price. How are those going? How are um, your requests for partnership going? You know, last year during the pandemic, there was big talk of mini bids. Nobody wanted to commit Mm -hmm. and everything. And now we're in a different market. What what does it look like in fall? What are the conversations that you guys are having? Yeah, so um, if you look at it by mode, for much of last year in the truckload mode, we were in quarterly contracted rates. We're seeing some of that market loosen a little bit where we're now maybe in a six-month rate versus a quarterly rate. Uh, But again, name of the game is to work with those carrier partners uh, and continue to work with them as long as service first, price second are are able to be met. So a little bit of length on the contracts. We're not at annual contracts. Some dedicated lanes we are, um, but the traditional contracts running between a three to six month. That's for truckload. For less than truckload, we're in 12-year agreements. 12-year agreement. So what is the LTL market looking like these days? It, it kind of is a skew a little bit from the truckload. It reacts to truckload or truckload reacts to it uh, in a bit of a different cycle. So where are we at right now with uh, LTL going into this holiday season? Yeah, I would say, you know, LTL carriers are, are disciplined in pricing. You know, since 08, 09, they've gotten a lot better at it. Um, you know, they there is capacity in that market, certainly not as much as in the truckload market. Uh, it's still pretty tight. And, you know, the LTL carriers, they don't have to like transactional truckload carriers dealing with like spot came down, spot truckload contracts came down, you know, spot rates came down 20% under contract, Mm. Um, you know, LTL carriers aren't dealing with that. So their pricing discipline, uh, they've maintained uh, price increases and they've maintained it 
throughout much of the year and last year, uh, you don't see that LTL pricing coming down like you do in the truckload contract. And again, I think they, they are pretty disciplined. It's a $51 billion industry. Um, and the LTL carriers are gaining in that they're getting now more into e-commerce than ever before. Mm -hmm. They are also, you know, building terminals or moving into terminals closer to ports. Uh, so they're getting the hands on that international freight sooner. And, and as we saw throughout the last couple of years, sourcing has been such a problem. So maybe you were a single source uh, supplier. You know, you were buying from one vendor and now you're buying from multiple, which is turning the mode uh, increases in that LTL mode. So maybe you're sourcing raw materials now from three different domestic suppliers versus one, which is creating more or less than truckload shipments. Right. Um, so I think pricing, you know, 2023, you will see pricing probably come down a little bit in the LTL market. Much of that will be uh, towards the diesel cost. Um, but again, I think they're going to be pretty disciplined in pricing. Is they have been. When you are reviewing people's transportation spend and the modes they're using, how often do you find in LTL that the classifications that they've been given or that they're using mm. are completely wrong? Uh, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot. Um, and it's a big piece of the negotiation. The other problem is, you know, shippers who can accurately class their items or their products are doing it at the SKU level, item level, in an ERP, let's say, in an ERP system. And if they're shipping mixed pallets, what the carriers are after is the freight class as a shipping pallet, right? Most right. LTL shipments move on pallets. And so that can completely change when you actually uh, put together a pallet of product, you may understand, you may looked up in the fast class SMC based on shipping uh, soup, what your freight class should be and have an idea of maybe what the length, width and height are. But when you put them on mixed pallets, that's that's really what they're after. And that's the work that we spend with shippers. Um, there's a lot of shipper behavior that drives LTL carrier pricing and understanding what that is. Um, we spend a lot of time educating shippers on how they're preparing freight, how they're treating carriers at pickup, how long they're retaining. Um, and, you know, the other thing we're seeing in the LTL market that I've been at this since 1989 um, and it's new and our market is LTL carriers, they used to take freight or take on customers that weren't actually great customers, but they would just raise the rate. They would say, all right, yeah. you're going to you delay me a pickup. You're going to delay me a delivery. I'm going to make sure I, I accrue for that in the rate. Now they're saying, we're not going to work with those customers. Yeah. So now more than ever. Yeah. Go ahead. No, it, it used to be that, you know, there was no such thing as bad freight, just poorly priced, right? And now they're realizing that there actually is bad bad freight. Um, so, I mean, and that what you're talking about there with those mixed pallets is really that FAK and the proper use of what an FAK is, right? Instead of the bastardized that it has become in many places, it's just a discount tool, right? That just, that, and, and that's the proper use of it is for those mixed pallets to get that average and get the, the proper pricing that is, that is out there. What do you think about density-based um, uh, pricing and a move away from the NMFC? Is that something in our future uh, that we, we can count on or no? I think everyone's talking about it just like they are, you know, the idea of dynamic pricing. And so you have LTL carriers who are saying, look, you have me on this route guide for all of this freight in these lanes, but would you give me access to the freight we're not getting? Just give me the visibility to that because there may be times during the week or during the month where I can actually price that pretty aggressively in a dynamic mm -hmm. model. Right. That's one. Two is, again, the, the density. I think the issue becomes, you know, in theory, it all makes sense. I mean, how old is freight classification? Um, and, and to shippers' defense, it's hard to figure out what your freight class should be. Almost mm -hmm. everything is a density now. Um, but systems need to be able to support that. So we still struggle shippers having the ability to actually give you cube or density at the order level, shipment level, load level, most of them don't have it. And so having the systems and the technology to be able to support some of this dynamic pricing as well as density pricing, I think will slow things down. But they're talking about, you know, everybody's talking about it and everyone's trying to figure it out.
Yeah. You know, so everyone went from feeling kind of bulletproof last year in, in their positions, especially if you're in supply chain because of labor shortages and the great resignation, you know, you had control and that's changed. And that's, that ripples, that psychology ripples throughout organizations. Um, Companies that now they're they're being pressured to reduce spend and get these costs down and get the wolf away from their door and their CFO off their back. What advice do you have for them who want to save some money now on their shipping? What should they think about today? That's the same advice we've been giving since 1988, <laughs> which is you, it hasn't changed. Uh, you need to be a good partner to your carriers. Uh, you need to understand that they too need to make a profit just like you two. And gone are the days where you can beat your carriers up for price. You can not treat them as a partner and you can give them crappy freight that doesn't service them well. Uh, that doesn't work anymore because you have always had the ability usually to really measure performance of your carriers and they now have the ab ability to measure you. And I think the shift in the LTL carrier discipline and pricing, it's not really around gaining more revenue, it's gaining more profitable freight. Mm -hmm. And they've gotten really good at measuring what's profitable in their environment versus what isn't. Um, and I think that's key for shippers. And we spend a lot of time with our clients really working through strategies, whether they're operational strategies at, sh at docs, whether they're data vi visibility strategies at the order level, what can you give us? When can you give it to us? You know, the more forecasting we can plan with LTL carrier, any carrier, any mode for that matter. But, you know, these LTL carriers, if you can get them a forecast and you can plan ahead and they can plan ahead, you're going to alleviate higher prices every time. True words, true words. And so you know, it's always the same. Good market, bad market. You still got to, you still have to create those relationships. And, you know, if you haven't really done that, you're worried about that, you, you want to get be proactive before your CFO says, why are we losing so much money now? Or why isn't anything moving? Or have you looked at the spend? Go to a company like Freight Plus, have them look at it. The worst thing they're going to do is not find anything. Today. That's right. Have them look at your stuff, see what they can do for you. Jill, thank you so much. So excited to have you back on the show. I really appreciate mm -hmm. it. Yeah, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Good to see you both. Take care. Right on. Thanks, Jill. Yeah. Interesting stuff. Totally different animal. Totally different animal. You yep. that, that gang over there before I came over uh, to this side of the house. Oh, that's Anyways. right. Anyways.